Now in the other videos on playing with the elements, we looked at the players, field, goals, ball, the rules, and sort of took a very quick look at how when you change one of those, it changes the game. Now we're going to take them all together and take another very short look at how by using these elements, you can create a game to deal with a problem. Now that's the first thing with small-sided games. You want to create a game that deals with a problem that's real and relevant for your kids so that it's not something you just dreamed up and we'll talk about that later and about coaches problems but it's an actual problem so here's the example you've been watching the kids playing four versus four and you notice that the two midfielders in four versus four have very poor communication they don't work well together they don't work well with the sweeper or the top player so we need to have those four players on the field the reason you need the four players is because their play, where the problem is, is in the setting of four versus four. You don't need five versus five or six or seven or anything like that. And to play two versus two is not going to be the same as four versus four. Now, we all, now the next step, we need to add the opponents. Now you have, with the players, the picture that you're looking for, four versus four. And the next thing you do is make sure the field's the right dimensions. That's the Goldilocks rule. Not too big, not too small, just right. So with this, the next element you want to add is going to be the goals. And there's nothing really unique or uh, phenomenal about this problem. You have four versus four, basic game, you add basic goals. Now with the goals in place, the kids have direction. Blue needs, blue knows that they're going to defend this goal and attack this, and red knows they're going to defend that goal and attack there. So we have direction has been added into the picture. Now the next thing, of course, is they have to have a ball. Okay, this is the regular game, a regular ball, no big deal there, don't need a volleyball or any of that kind of stuff. This will work. Now the way the game is set up is four versus four. That's what you observe the problem in, and you can have them play this and you can coach it in four versus four that's great but you're probably going to have to get really involved in it because the problems they're making they go up they don't get back that's that's the basic problem there is that you're going to have to constantly remind them you're going to be doing a lot of coaching maybe there's a way that the game can be a teacher so what we do is this we modify the field and we add a rule we put a line across midfield and the rule is this that at all times blue must keep two players in their half of the field and one player in the opponent's half of the field now just to simplify things red has the same rules two players here one player there now that means three players are going to be locked into a half one player is free to float between the halves but you don't tell them which player it is. That's what they have to figure out. Now, if you remember in the diamond formation, who has the responsibility of going from end to end, of going into both halves of the field? It's the two midfielders. They're the ones that carry the responsibility of going from their half of the field into the other half. So what happens when the ball gets played into the opponent's half and both players cross it over the line it's a free kick to red there's been an infraction holy cow guys okay well I'll go back red gets the ball one player comes over here and now red plays the ball in deep red's now playing two versus two in this half um, hey over there on the right you think you might want to come back and help because after all you can't float okay great so now I'll come back and I'll play here now one of the things about this game that's kind of neat is that if both teams are playing at a certain level of concentration and attention, they'll always, the attacking team will be numbers down, two attackers versus three defenders, which is, should be pretty realistic for the game. Now within this game, there's going to be a lot of many moments where players are going to have to read the situation, make decisions, and then make an action. So for example, the blue midfielder has the ball. Well, do I carry the ball over myself? 
be, being the one player to cross over, or do I play the ball in to the striker and follow it in? Or do I play the ball into the striker and then the left midfielder makes a run? Or, once in a while, the sweeper might even come forward. So all of these things are going to happen within the game. This creates a lot of little coachable moments, many moments in the game. These are smaller than the four main moments, but they're the ones you're going to look for to coach in. Now, because of the way the rules are set up, when a team, either team, doesn't stay within the rules, when the two players go across, who is it that's going to get on the players? It doesn't have to be the coach. Because when the players say, hey, both of you over here, or maybe coach, you act as a referee, guess what? Loss of possession. Oh, gosh darn it. Now these players will start saying, look, one of you has to stay back. You guys better start to figure this out. So the ownership of the problem goes within the team. The leadership to solve the problem, well, who's it going to be? It could be any one of the four. And they can start working that stuff out themselves. Now, this may sound like a lot of work, making your own game up, reading the game, doing all this. You're going to have to start writing stuff down, things like that. And it's not going to be for everyone. And it's going to take a while, even if you are interested in learning this, to get the hang of it. But think of it like musicians. There are musicians who work strictly from sheet music, and they're brilliant at what they do. These, as far as coaches are concerned, these are coaches that they get the book, they find the drill, they find the exercise, they find the game, they apply it, they go from there, and that's all well and good. There are also musicians who want to create things for themselves. This becomes personal. This is their attempt to make something themselves. And when you start to get the hang of this, the thing you can do is you can make problems for your team. When you get something out of a book or a DVD or the internet, great. But that's been made by another coach for other players, just like this little game here. You're going to have to tweak it to meet your own needs. And in that tweaking, that modifying, these are the elements that you're going to play with. Maybe you don't play with four. Maybe you play with four versus three and some kind of a neutral player. These are the things you're going to change to get to the problem for your players to meet their individual needs and your specific situation. Can you meet me there? Can you meet me there? Can you meet me there? Can you meet me?